Hello everyone and welcome back to AG's Point of View, where I give you my analysis on the most popular topics in the world today. Today we have a video on the 76ers. As you can very well see, this is my team. I report the news, whether it be sports, crime, politics, you know, you name it, I report it. So um, the reason why this is a big story is because of the comments that were made, you know, after the game. Um, before I dive into the video, if you're new here, welcome. Welcome to AG's Point of View. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button as well. Uh, let me know that you approve of the video. You would like to come back to see more content. And if you click the notification bell, it'll let you know when I drop more content, similar to this one. For all my normal subscribers, thanks for coming back. I'm diving in. And B calls two-man game with Harden unstoppable. Philadelphia 76ers MVP candidate Joel Embiid is thrilled by the early returns of his partnership with James Harden and thinks the league will have a hard time retaining the duo. Unstoppable? What are you really going to do? Embiid set up his two-man two game with Harden following the team's 125-109 win over the New York Knicks. You got to make a decision. Do you stay on me or do you stay on him? And if you want to guard both of us with the other guys, now you got Matisse reliable driving to the rim or wide open shooters. And B has been typically dominant in the last two games. He's played with Harden, seems to be benefiting from the additional space in the latter presence creates. After his, 30, after his 34 points, 10 rebound effort in the pairs do, do, do Excuse me, and the pair's debut together against the Minnesota Timberwolves on Friday, and B produced a 37-point performance, including the NBA season-high 23 made free throws on Sunday. Harden arrived in Philadelphia in a blockbuster deal with the Brooklyn Nets involving Ben Simmons on trade deadline day. He missed his first four games as a Sixer while nursing a hamstring injury. The Sixers' latest victory improved their record to 37-23 which positions them just two and a half games behind the Miami Heat for the East top seed. Okay, so now my assessment of the video, well actually of the game is at this present moment, yes, he's correct. They are unstoppable. Um, I haven't seen anyone figure out what to do about the, the duo, um, Harden or uh, Embiid. Um, what I'm more impressed about and what I'm more excited about is not just them two doing what they do, but allowing our point, you know, our prior point guard, Tyrese Maxey, to go out and flourish and do the things that he's comfortable and that he's strong enough to go out there and do. Um, that allows him to, you know, freelance roam. I mean, in the past two games, I didn't see Tyrese Maxey being wide open for three pointers. They like they can't keep up, and he just wide open and he's knocking them down. So I mean, that helps tremendously, and that will keep Joel Embiid getting one on ones. That'll keep uh, James Harden being able to go one on one. And the fact that they went out there and Joel Embiid ended up with 23 made free throws, okay, on like 23 or 27. And um, Harden dropped a triple-double, like 29 points, 10 rebounds, like 13 assists, 16 assists, something like that. Um, the game was monstrous. I mean, you know, just, just the whole thing, you know, just looking at it and just like, wow, okay. The sixes they possibly can win a championship this year. I mean, you know, of course, I'm biased because that's my team. Okay, I get it. But at the same time, um, these guys could actually go out there and make some noise. I mean, and most of the time when you get a team like that, a new player comes along, you know, you got to find your way. Um, it's kind of hard to find your way when you first get somebody, you just... You know, you, especially a star player, he wants to find out where he fits in with the team. He don't want to come in rocking the boat, especially if y'all went in and y'all doing what y'all got to do. He don't want to come in and, you know, 
shake up the chemistry and all that kind of stuff. But um, it wasn't really much that he had to really do. It was almost like it was, all, you know, it was all on Joel Embiid's shoulders, and now he's getting some help. It's making it even easier for him to go do what he got to do. So all he's doing is running the point, and then everybody just spacing out. He just finding everybody in their most comfortable spots. Um, another point I want to bring up is Tobias Harris. Today, Tobias Harris was three for nine. Okay, um, he went two for five for three pointers. The two for five for three pointers was clearly at the end of the game. Um, so his plus minus was a, ironically was a plus 25. Okay, so he did some things. Um, he did some things that kind of helped his cause. He did actually go out there and get what? Uh, his stat line was played for 35 minutes, made four three throws, two three pointers, three field goals all together, um, five rebounds, two assists, one block, three personal fouls. Okay, so he only had 12 points. Um, what do we do? You know what I mean, like, I understand that we was able to go out and do what we needed to do. You know, you got big numbers from Joel Embiid. He goes out and he gets you 37 points, um, nine rebounds, four blocks, a steal. I mean, you know, three assists. So he's out there, you know, still doing his normal thing. What do you do? He bully ball, you know what I'm saying? And they really can't stop him. And then you got Harden. See, the thing about Harden is he went 10 for 10 from the free throw line. But the ironic thing is, and B went to the free throw line 27 times. That's a lot of times. Some teams don't even go to the to the free throw line 27 times in the game. This dude went 27 times in a in, in a whole game himself. So, I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot for for one player. You know what I'm saying? And the majority of his points came off the free throw line. Cause he only made seven buckets, but um, and he was 0 for 4 from the three you know three point land, but. He still went out there and dominated, you know what I'm saying? When he got a chance to get down to the blocks, you know what I'm saying? He made it hard on these guys and, you know, got, basically got him in foul trouble, fouled a couple guys out. I mean, early fouls from the Knicks actually helped the Sixers out toward the end. So, um, Tyrese Maxey, let's talk about Tyrese Maxey. He had, he was three for five for three pointers. Now, he got five three pointers up, made three of them. That's because Tyrese Maxey is staying in practice, hanging out with Joe LMB and James Harden and just working next next to him and just trying to figure his way, figure his spot where he can get open shots at. Now, this is something that we all thought that we can get from Ben Simmons. But ironically, you know, Ben Simmons wasn't able to produce that, you know. Ben Simmons would have had more of a Tobias Harris role, you know what I'm saying, with those kind of numbers, maybe 12 points you know, eight assists, you know, six rebounds or something stupid like that, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, Maxi goes out, he gets you, he played 37 minutes, he got you seven rebounds. Now, he's one of the smallest guys on the floor. Okay, that's on the starting lineup. Okay, he gets you seven rebounds. He got more rebounds than Thibel and Harris, okay? And... He put in work. He basically went in and put in work. Um, you know, he had 21 points, three assists, two steals. You know what I'm saying? He was all over the place. So it was like, you know, he's making himself, he's basically carving a spot out for his, you know, for him to be the third wheel. You know what I'm saying? You got them beat, you got Harden, and then you got Max. Everybody's saying the big three. It's going to be Tobias Harris. You know, Joel Embiid and um, James Harden, but um, I beg to differ. I think it's Maxie and not Hart, not um, Tobias Harris. So some of the other guys, you know, it was, you know, they came out, they did what they had to do. It was kind of mundane, but it wasn't much going on with them. But what I, what I was encouraged about, and um, I'm not gonna make this video any lengthier. Um, I'm since, you know, kind of come down to the end of this. Um, I like the rotations. I like the fact that, you know, I understand we had that cork miles out there. He ain't give you anything, okay? Shake Milton gave you four points. 
George's Niang got you six for off of two three pointers. My biggest thing about George Niang, he don't play good defense. And when he get that ball and he put it on the floor to go dribble, you know it's nothing but bad news is about to happen. He about to fall, he about to kick the ball out of bounds, he about to throw it away, he about to miss the layup, something about to happen. If you stand back then when you catch and you shoot that three, it's lights out. So, I mean, if he can just find his spot right there and do that, he'll be fine. Um, Danny Green had a bad night. Um, you know, Paul Millsap, for the time that he was in there, I mean, he tried, but he didn't get a lot, but, you know, he got six points. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, for the most part, we held down the Knicks. You know, you know they had their two top scorers, Evan Fournier, R.J. Barrett, and um, quickly. So, I mean, they did their thing. You know what I'm saying? They did what they had to do, but overall, I like what I see with the Sixers. I like them going out there, playing ball, doing what they got to do, moving people around, you know, moving that ball around the horn, getting open shots, getting easy layups. And um, if you can continue to do something like this, this is basically playoff basketball. Yeah, I know they want to get out and run. And in the playoffs, you really can't run a lot. But, I mean, I feel like we will be able to run because we got guys like Fiebel, who does great defense, lockdown defender, um, and Tyrese Maxey. As soon as the ball goes up and it's coming down, he ready to get the ball run. He ready to run. And I think he's one of the fastest sixes that I've seen around since, uh, Al, you know, Allen Iverson. So, um, and the last point I wanted to make was James Harden was the first sixer in Sixers history to have 25 points and 10 rebounds in his first two games. I mean, I'm sorry, 10 assists in his um, first two games. So the average that. So that's big numbers. That's huge. So that's something that we can look forward to going forward. So I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Um, but do me a favor. Let me know how you feel about the game. Well, how far do you think the Sixers can go? Is this one of those situations where the Sixers do good during the regular season? We cruise through the first round, get to the second round and hit a wall. Are we hitting the wall again in the second round? Just let me know in the comment section. You know what I'm saying? You know, talk to me and I'll talk back. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And come on back and let's get some engagement going on. Um, as you all know, I love every single one of y'all. I thank y'all for coming out and watching the video thus far. Um, and I'll talk to you later. See you in the next episode. Peace.